Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through The Prodigal's Club, which is a sequel of sorts to the excellent Last Will, which is one of Jen's favorite games of all time and one I really enjoy quite a lot as well. In Last Will, players were tasked with trying to race to be the first to lose all of their fortune because of a crazy Brewster's Million type situation they were in. Now, in Prodigal's Club, it ups the ante. Not only are we trying to lose our fortune, we're also trying to lose the support of high society and any chance of getting elected into public office. So we are desperately setting out to be high-ranking members of the Prodigals Club, young prodigal sons who have decided to renounce everything that their status and station in life would get them. And that's what we're going to be doing in this game today. I've already got it set up as a two-player game. I am the green player. Jen is the purple player. And now there's several ways you can play the Prodigal Club. Because there are three modules you can compete in. You can compete to try to get rid of your possessions. You can compete to try to lose the election and make all the voters hate you. And you can compete to try to make high society hate your guts as well. Now, as part of setup, in a regular game, you're supposed to pick two of these three modules. And so you're only competing in two arenas. But just to show you as much of the game as possible, I've set up so that in like the advanced game, you play competing in all three arenas at the same time. Now the way this works is we're going to play through five rounds over here you can see the five round counter or until somebody has completely wiped themselves out in one of the three arenas. If somebody completely loses all their possessions, completely falls 100% out of favor with high society or completely loses every vote because right now at the beginning of the game our rich father has already bought us 42 votes. We got 42 votes in the bag. We got to lose those votes by pissing off the voters. As soon as somebody can lose all the votes, lose their ranking or lose all their possessions, that could trigger the game to end early. Although normally, you're probably going to play through all five rounds, at least if you're playing with all three modules. And then at the end of the game, you take your score in each of these three modules, and whichever one is the highest, i.e. the one you did the worst on, because remember, you want low scores. You want to have very few possessions. You want to have very few votes. You want to have very few friends in high society. So, whichever of these three competitions you did the most poorly in, i.e. you have the highest standing, that becomes your final score. So if at the end of the game you've got 15 votes but 20 bucks worth of possessions and 22 points worth of standing, it doesn't matter that you, did, you almost got rid of all your votes, 22 is going to be your score and whoever has the lowest score at the end of the game wins. Sounds a bit crazy? Well, it is. That's the Prodigals Club, and I'm going to start playing right now. Uh, the first thing you do at the beginning of every round is you seed the boards with a whole bunch of opportunities. And you can see down here in the possessions board, there's a valet I could hire who is basically just a worthless waste of space who costs me a buck and does nothing for me. I can make friends in Westminster, which will help me sell off my possessions at, at a loss. Because <clears throat> at the beginning of the game, everybody, like I said, we start with 42 votes. We start with our standing in society being at the absolute highest. High society loves us. We got to drop all the way down here to the low end to get high society to hate us. And we start with 10 pounds, although in my case I have 11 pounds because I'm the first player, so that's a slight disadvantage. I have an advantage being first, so I have more money to get rid of. And we start with six possessions. A racehorse, a dog, a yacht, a mansion, a private chef, and a carriage. So. At the end of the game, any of these possessions I've still got count towards how much money I have at the end of the game. And in fact, they count more. This pedigree pooch, uh, I want to get rid of it because it's worth six bucks. But if I don't, at the end of the game, I take a penalty and I believe it's an extra three. So this pooch is worth nine bucks at the end of the game if I haven't gotten rid of it. However, like I said, one of the opportunities that's come up, there's all these cards all over the place. Grabbing these cards represents opportunities. If I have, quote, friends in Westminster, I can sell Westminster-based resources at a greater loss. I'd lose two bucks on a sale. And at the beginning of the game, I have two Westminster possessions, as does Jen, although they're different ones in her case. So there's some opportunities here. I can get some bad accounting advice where I lose a buck for every possession I have that has the, I, I don't know what the, I forget the name of the location that has that icon. I have a car, you know, I've got the valet. But, you know, these are the possessions opportunities. There's also opportunities over in high society. I could 
get this journalist on my side to start telling people to hate my guts. And that could allow me to manipulate high society. I could take a dinner reservation, which depending on how many restaurants I've got in my back pocket, how many places I could eat around town could make more and more of high society hate my guts because they go out to dinner with me. I will, well, I'll do all kinds of that stuff like blow cigar smoke in their face and that will make me fall in society's graces. And then over here in the political arena, there's a bunch of opportunities as well. I could do, give a slurred speech, which will make me lose votes. I can hire a, ho a hopeless jockey, which will make me lose votes for every horse, every racehorse I've got. Now, at the beginning of the game, I've got one racehorse over there, but I could potentially get more racehorses because also in the political arena, there are these political circles I could join that might give me more options. I could also get new resources depending on how much I make the high society hate my guts. And of course, I've got resources right from the echo. This is a very rich, complicated, or well, not complicated, it's a simple game. It's a simple worker placement game, but there's lots of really cool complex card combos you can pull off. And I'm going to try and demonstrate that right now. So. Let's get going. I am the first player. He's again first over here on the player marker. And the first half of every round is a worker placement phase where we take turns placing our top hats, sending our little errand boys all over the city to do different things. And so I'm the first player. I get first dibs on everything. What do I want? Well, you know what? Every round, there's always going to be one card right here that's kind of universally useful that can help you in all the different arenas. So I think I'm going to come over here and grab a cheap assistant. Now, what this guy means is a black bordered card is really nice because this is a special power I have for the rest of the game. White bordered cards are nice, but they only get to be used once and then they're removed from the game. Black border cards are better because they stick around. And this cheap assistant, every round, I'll be able to use him once to either dump some money, lose a vote, or reduce my standing by one in the in the high society. So I'll go ahead and take him. Every black border card, well actually I should say, every card goes into my hand. So I've just grabbed my first card, it goes into my hand. After we're done with all the worker placement stuff, and we've done some actions, we've so collected some cards, etc, etc, then we go into the action phase where we actually start playing all the cards that we collected. So that was my first action, I grabbed a card, and now it's Jen's first action. And you know what? I think Jen likes this jockey, she's going to come over here. You can see there's three spaces that, you know, by taking this, Jen can grab in either this group of cards, this group of cards, these two cards plus this political circle, or this card plus this political circle. And the fact that this hopeless jockey will, you know, make her lose votes over the course of the game for every horse she's got, and there's a political circle tile right below it that has a horse on it, she kind of likes that. She's going to jump over here and grab this. So she's got a hopeless jockey. Well, again, she... And she now has to take one of these uh, political tiles and she has to place it. We start with one of these political tiles and now she can place it such that icons match up. So she could put a blank space next to a blank space. Um, you know, but th she, she could put a horse next to a horse, but she doesn't have any horses. But these question marks are wild cards. So she's going to put this like this. And what that means is Jen now has access to two horses. One that she actually owns that is going to make her lose a bunch of points at the, or you know, gain a bunch of points, which she doesn't want to do at the end of the game. She wants to get rid of this horse, but she also now, through her political connections, has access to another racehorse. So that means later on in the round, when she activates this hopeless jockey, she's going to lose two points, one for each horse that she's got. And over the course of the game, you know, there's some possessions out here. She might grab some more horses. She could actually get access to horses by insulting people in certain ways on the, you know, the, the, oh, the, I can't think of it, the, the high society track, etc, etc. So that was Jen's first turn. Now it's my second turn. I get to go someplace else. Let's see, now there's only two more opportunities to grab these three remaining banks of cards in the politics area if I wanted to do that. Hmm. So, uh, let's see, and there's a similar one. There's a corrupt dog catcher which makes me, makes me lose um, votes for every dog I have. And I start with the dog, and I could get another dog through political machinations. Plus, it comes with a one-time card that lets me lose votes. And, and, uh, and really, you can see this little L. This means I, pick, I can piss off the liberals 
in the, in the city. Which means if the card comes out, there's like a liberal newspaper. And if I have that, if I have the liberal newspaper in my back pocket, every time I do any kind of liberal bashing, I can piss them off and lose even more votes. Actually, there's two, wow, there's a three liberal cards out there. So if I could you know, grab all those liberal cards and then later on either get the liberal ma magazine or the liberal newspaper or the liberal reporter or both, that could be a huge amount of votes lost. What the heck, let's come over here. Since Jen's grabbed one, I'm going to try and grab some political cards as well. So that means I could take this one, which would give me another tile, and I could... Well, actually, it's interesting. It doesn't... I, I could give myself a horse, or I could give this. But I don't really care about those. I'm going to try and really focus on pissing off the liberals. I'm going to grab these three cards which gives me a garish suit, which means every time I make a speech, um, people remember me in a bad way uh, because of my garish suit. And I'm gonna, I'll have the opportunity whenever I want to make a political demonstration and another political demonstration, both of which make me lose a vote. But if liberals are watching, I could lose even more votes. So that was my second action. I've got four cards now. Now it's Jen's second action. <clears throat> and Jen, she would like more horses. She wants to really come. So she's going to come over here, and that's it. There are now no more opportunities. Jen could grab these cards or these cards. She's going to grab these, uh, some slur a couple of slurred species, and another one of these political tiles. Now, this has a horse on it. Jen would like to bump it up next to this horse, but she can't. So, but what she will do, she'll go on ahead and put this right here. And so now, through Jen's political wrangling, not only has she got access to an extra horse, she also has access to an extra dinner reservation. So, that makes this card really attractive for her as well. All right. So anyway, that was Jen's second action. Now it's my next action. Let's see. And, we can, and so these cards, effectively, no one can grab these cards now because all these spaces are full up. Let's see. What do I want to do? I think I will... Let's see. I haven't come down here to the possessions. And you know, I think I'm going to jump over here. Mm. Maybe one, two... I'm going to make a friend in Westminster because eventually I'm going to want to sell off these Westminster possessions and I've got two of them. I could lose an extra four bucks thanks to my friend. Also, I've got a little more time, which is kind of a wild card thing I can use for in combination with a few different cards. So I'll come over there and grab that. Now it's Jen's turn again. I think she's going to be the first to come over here to high society and she is going to snag that dinner invitation because she wants to take advantage of the fact that she has access to two dinner, um, you know, two dining spots, this one and this one. So my turn again. We're starting to run out of workers. I've only got a few left. Hmm. I think what I'm going to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am going to come over here now. This is a space that allows me to exchange possessions I've got with other possessions on the board. Every, at the beginning of every round, four possessions have come out randomly. And now that I've got a friend in Westminster, I want more Westminster possessions so that when I sell them off, I lose more money. And you can see two Westminster possessions have come out here. Um, you know, these uh, fine pieces of art that I could get, which are worth four bucks, and this carriage, which is worth two bucks. So what I'm going to do is I get to swap one of my possessions for one of these possessions. And I want to grab one of these Westminster ones because they are, they are worth less to me. So I don't want to give up these Westminster possessions. So I'm either going to give up my chef, my mansion, my yacht, or my dog. Let's see here. Uh... I think I'll try to give up my mansion because it's worth the most. It's worth six bucks. So I'll give up this six buck mansion and try to replace it with a two dollar carriage. Which when I try to sell this carriage, which is only worth two bucks, I'll actually get to sell it for nothing because of my friend in Westminster. So I've just gotten rid of a lot of wealth. But here, there's a limit to this. You'll notice over here, when I make an exchange, I cannot lose more than three dollars in the exchange. Now I just lost four dollars because I gave up a six dollar mansion for a two dollar carriage. I lost four bucks worth. That means um, because the most I could lose is three, I had to take another pound. So I only lost three bucks there. But it means my friend in Westminster is really going to help me out. So I've done that swap. Now it's Jen's turn again. Where is she going to go? Let's see here. Right. Hmm. Oh, she could finish a political circle. 
That'd be kind of nice. Yeah, Jen's going to come over here, back to the politics arena, and this is going to let her do two things. First of all, she immediately loses one vote. She goes from 42 down to 41, and she can take another one of these tiles. And I believe she will take this one. And now, this is a blank on most sides, so it has to go next to a blank, although this question mark could go anywhere, so this question mark could go right here. And that would give Jen another horse. So now Jen has one, two, three horses that she can use her bad jockey on and lose three votes. So she's pretty happy with that. Now Jen has another option. Instead, Jen could place this, say, over like this. Blanks go next to blanks. Jen could still put something next to the wild card over here. But by completing a set of two by two, Jen has made a, an inner circle. This little thing here represents an inner circle. That's a bonus you can use. Whenever you make an inner circle, you get to lose extra votes extra standing in society, or extra money. But Jen right now, she's not going to go for that inner circle and get that free bonus. Jen's going to have access to more horses. And she dropped a vote. So now it's my turn again. And see, where am I going? Where am I going indeed? Let's see here. Now, actually, haven't really talked to much. We've talked, shown a bit about how we can get rid of possessions. I'm already planning on getting rid of some possessions. In fact, well, see, this is kind of tricky. I'd like, I could come here now. And I could sell two possessions. The interesting thing is, right now at the beginning of the game, Westminster possessions already have a negative one, so I lose an extra buck when I sell Westminster possessions. But I have not activated my friend in Westminster yet. I won't get to do that till the action phase. So that means, even though I've got a great, I don't, I don't want to sell my stuff until later. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to try and sell anything right now. Um. <clears throat> I see. But I could get some more, I could get a valet who will just like bleed me dry for the rest of the game. I'll just start losing money off this guy. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to get a valet. All right. So, Jen, she's got two more actions. What else is she going to do? You know, I think Jen is going to become a Renaissance man. She's going to grab this Renaissance tile, which will be another item that she can use after we're done with our worker placement and we're doing all our actions. This gives her access to two icons. And Jen could treat this as two more horses. So Jen could have like the, the, the horse turn to end all horse turns because she is now a renaissance man. And now we're down to my final worker placement spot, folks. I get one more. Let's see here. What do I want to do? Can't grab these cards because both these can't grab those cards. I haven't really... Jen's done a little bit of stuff on the high society. I could jump over there as well. What would I do if I did some high society business? Well, I could get a journalist. And this guy, for the rest of the game, would let me manipulate how people feel about me by moving them left or right on the high society board. Or I could get this one-time Sunday picnic, which basically lets me move downwards um, anybody who is in my red column. Now, at the beginning of the game, I've got two characters in the red column. And so, both of these characters would move down one. And so if the game ended right now, my standing in high society is equal to the value of where these four markers are. 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 14. That's a very high score. I don't want a high score. But if I take this, if I have a Sunday picnic where, well, um, obviously that's a bit scandalous, this particular Sunday picnic, then both of these will fall down one. And um, so I have basically lost four overall points in high society, and I have given myself access to a mansion in case I have any cards that benefit from a mansion. And I have also kind of thwarted, um, oh, I can't remember her name, Miss Marple or something like that? Miss, oh, I mean, th this is like a high society lady who tells all the high society people how wonderful we are. And right now, at the end of this round, what she's going to do is she's going to make our standing in society rise. Any person of, of these four markers on the high society who are um, on the same row, they're all going to rise one. Now, as it stands right now, that's not going to affect us because everybody's nobody can rise any higher. Um, yeah, you know what? I think I am. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to have... I'm going to grab this, so we're going to have a Sunday picnic. That's going to let me lose my standing. But in addition to taking this card, I also get to manipulate one person. I can move one person in high society down left or down right. My choice. Let's see. And I think what I will do is I will move this guy down left like that. 
So uh, he's fallen. Uh, I've fallen in his graces. He used to be worth 16 points. Now he's only worth 14 points of society. So I'm already starting to make society hate me a little bit because I went over there. That was my last move. And now it is Jen's last move. What is she going to do? Right. So we can't, there are no more cards. We can't grab any more cards. Jen could lose a vote. Jen could give herself, at the end of the round, we are each going to give, give a political speech in Hyde Park. And whoever gives the worst speech has the potential to lose two more votes. And whoever gives the best speech, i.e. the least worst, actually gains a vote. So if Jen comes over here, she gets two more bullhorns. That can pretty much guarantee that she'll lose two more votes. But Jen's already planning on losing a lot of votes. And in this game, you really have to have kind of like a well-balanced approach to everything you're doing. Let's see. So Jen's done some politics. She's done a little bit of high society maintenance. Does she want to do some possession stuff? She could come over here and sell some possessions. Now, unfortunately, she'll have more money, but then she'll have money she can get rid of. And remember, if she doesn't sell this yacht by the end of the game, this isn't worth four bucks, it's worth seven bucks. So you do need to get this stuff sold. But now, and now is a, is a good time to sell Westminster possessions because they are at a deficit. But here's the problem. Jen's Westminster possession is her horse. She doesn't want to sell her horse right now. See, you want to sell these possessions because they, they're an uh, albatross around your neck at the end of the game. But if you sell them, you potentially lose their value. So Jen does not want to sell Westminster items. So I don't think she wants to sell right now. She could just lose a buck plus an additional buck for, ever, for all the extra time she's got. But she has no extra time cards. She could do some more... Um, you know what? <sighs> Jen remembers... <clears throat> Let's see. Now, it's important to kind of remember what cards players have grabbed. I mean, I've grabbed a whole bunch of cards. And if Jen were paying attention, she would remember that I grabbed the garish suit. So Jen knows, if she remembers this, because I haven't played it yet, it's in my hand, she knows I'm going to have one bugle. And Jen doesn't have any bugles right now. No, that's not true. Jen has, Jen has three bugles. But here's the thing. Jen could play these this turn, and she'd have three bugles, but these uh, slurred speeches are very insulting. If um, a black border card comes out later that could give Jen more lost votes for being insulting, she might want to wait on playing these until later. But that means if she doesn't play these, she'll have no bugles, and she'll actually win the public debate, and that would be bad for her. So I think Jen's last action is she's going to come over here, and this gives her two bugles. All right. So, we are done with the worker placement phase. Now, there's a few places we didn't go. Instead, Jen's last turn is, oh, Jen could have come over here to do two things. Grab first player, so she'll be first next turn. because you know, And obviously, in a, in a two-player game, we ignore the grab third, fourth, and fifth player actions. Also, in a two-player game, we ignored this space, which is only available in a three-player game. And if we were playing uh, with more players, we would actually flip this board over because there's a four- and five-player side on the other side of all of these boards. So Jen could grab bugles to win to ensure that she wins the, the competition in Hyde Park. But Jen knows she does have some bugles. She could play these if she needs to. I think instead, Jen is gonna, oops, Jen is gonna grab first player for herself. And in addition to grabbing that, she can grab one of these bonuses. She can lose another vote. She could lose two pounds. She could sell one item at a one dollar discount. She could get another bugle, so she could um, you know, potentially lose that way. Um, or she can grab one of these to manipulate her high society, which she hasn't touched at all yet. But you know what? I think she doesn't care about her high society right now. Or does she? What did she do? Oh, actually, yeah, I guess, she, I guess she does a little bit because she's got this dinner reservation, which is going to work out well. It's going to let her move um, some stuff around. So maybe, so she does that, and she does that, one, two... All right. Now, ideally, what she'd like to do is manipulate her, the people in high society so they land, say, over on this space because that gives her another horse. So she, the jockey could be, right, so that'd be one, two, which she's got from the restaurant. So that'd be that and that. And then those guys, so that. Does she want to? And then she can move there for that. Um, she benefits from having more restaurant reservations and more horses. So she wants to get somebody into this horse space and into this restaurant space over there. Hmm. So, so bippity bop. So that's going to move down there. That moves down there. 
You know, I think Jen's just going to grab this. She grabbed first player and she grabbed this, which she'll use a little bit later. Okay, so now we are done. We have finished the worker placement phase of a round. And now, in, um, in the turn order, um, this doesn't resolve until the end of the round, so I'm still first player for the rest of this round. Now, I'm going to use any of the cards I want to use. And after I'm done, Jen will use any of the cards she wants to use. And then the round will be over. And while it was a big advantage to be first up front because you get first dibs on stuff on the board, it's a good advantage to be last because you want to be the last player giving a speech in Hyde Park because there's this competition for whoever gives the worst speech. And so Jen wants to wait to see how many bugles or how many speech icons I create because then she'll know if she needs to play this one, which gives her two. So Jen's pretty happy to still be, um, she'll be first player next round, but for now she's still last player. And so it's my turn. I've got all these cards and I'm going to want to start playing them. But you know what? I'm already at 25 minutes. Wow. I think I'm going to stop right there. And if you guys want to see the second half of the round, how I'm going to play all these cards and how I'm going to use these cards to start, you know, losing points in all the various contests, well, you can hit the eye up in the top right corner of the screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.